The study of epigenetics holds promise and hope for new treatment opportunities and cures for disease. Exciting new discoveries in this area are making this possible. In 2004, in a lab in Boston, such a discovery was made. Histomethylation was discovered in the early 60s. A lot of attempts have been made to try to identify these enzymes, but ultimately all failed because the enzymatic activities were low and harder to detect. Once you know it's there, you go back and do the same experiment, boom, it's there. You can see it now. It was in the summer of 2004. You know, like any scientific quest, there are ups and downs. Sometimes it's kind of Hail Mary. We want to do one more experiment, right? I got a call from Gino early in the morning. He called me and he says, I don't think I'm coming to the party tonight. So I said, what happened? He says, I, I just got the data. I think it's a histone demesylase. <laughs> When we get the first data, I cannot believe it, honestly. But somehow, my gut tell me we got something. We were all very excited, but immediately very cautious uh, about the initial data. My immediate response was, are you really sure? You know, have you done all the controls? I work all night. We proved it. the first breakthrough moment. On December 16th, 2004, it was published online about the discovery of lysine demethylases. It was an enzyme that had been looked for for almost 40 years, and finally was found and published and documented. By finding an enzyme that was able to facilitate the removal, it really kind of set forth that this path of methylation was in a permanent direction. And I remember very vividly Yang coming to me and saying, you know, this is a moment. Seize it. It could change your life. Now, all over the world, the hunt was on for the other remaining enzymes. We saw the paper from Yang Shi's lab on LSD1 and we thought, wow, this is really interesting. And then we just start speculating, are there other proteins in this subgroup? So then the paper came out in the spring of 2005. They suggested there was another family of uh, proteins called uh, the Jumanji family of proteins. It turned out we isolated two of these uh, proteins which were in that family. It really catalyzed a discovery for approximately 20 more plus enzymes. These are all enzymes that have very defined pockets, and so, so they are druggable, and we already have small molecules uh, for many of these players. Now the question is, do we know enough about the biology? Do they play a role in safeguarding the epigenome integrity. If they're mutated, they're deleted, they're amplified or changed, how would you take advantage of that situation and potentially either diagnose somebody differently, think about a different course of action for those individuals, or more importantly, develop a novel therapeutic to apply to them to kind of shut that down or regulate it. So if we can somehow manipulate these regulators so that cancer cells will alter slightly, and then now they will become responsive to immune checkpoint blockade. Can we overcome resistance also by manipulating either epigenetic regulator or me metabolic regulators, or a combination of those, uh, or different combinations? Some of those enzymes have actually been shown to be involved in diseases where, or treatments of cancer, where you see more metastatic diseases also resistance to chemotherapy. And so this might be actually a second way to actually treat some of those uh, patients. These discoveries have now led to efforts in biotech and pharma companies, developing lysine demethylase inhibitors. These efforts have resulted in ongoing clinical trials and even more possibilities. Now immunotherapy is working on 20-25% of the patients, you know, in combination with epigenetic drugs. From a lung cancer point of view, we're very excited about using the possibility of epigenetic modification along with immunotherapy to see if we can unmask some new targets and try to figure out, can we convert some of these tumors that don't respond to immunotherapy actually respond with the addition of epigenetic modifications. In GU Cancer, we're helping reinvigorate immunotherapy with the use of epigenetics as part of a clinical trial, in this case for bladder cancer. Epigenetics is one of those fields. We're modifying the genome and modifying resistance mechanisms. We have the opportunity to make a quantum leap. So in this case, the leadership has made a decision that we think epigenetics is one of the next frontiers. We've made a bet 
that this is where we should be and we're willing to invest in this program. This is where the power of epigenetics is today. So a symposium like the one in Philadelphia is very important because it's a way to celebrate big discoveries and it's also a way to discuss, you know, what are the big questions? What are you working on? Uh, how can we help you? To have a network of people work together, collaborate, discuss, brainstorm, all these are very important for accomplishing our goal of you know, understanding not only the fundamental biology uh, that's of interest to every one of us, but also their applicability to uh, benefit humankind, you know, treating diseases, uh, fighting cancer. I think it's a tremendous opportunity. It's very, very exciting. This is where we're going. This is the future. The opportunities are endless.